sending up the country set, London literary types and everyone in between, no British stereotype escapes the satirical pen of Posey Simmons. Her comic strips have been a staple in the daily press for decades. Her graphic novels Tamara Drew and Gemma Bovary applauded for their crossover to the big screen. A respected artist on the other side of the channel, Simmons is now heading up the jury at France's foremost festival of comics. Posey Simmons, thanks so much for joining us. You're this year's uh, president of the jury at the Angoulême Comics and Graphic Novel Festival. It's a really big event here in the French-speaking world. Some of the artists are very well known. But how do you think that comics, graphic novels, cartoons are doing internationally? I think they've grown in an extraordinary way. Um, if, we, if I'm thinking about the um, United Kingdom, uh, when I first started uh, drawing um, in the 60s, you know, there were co comics for children, there were superheroes, but there were no cartoon festivals. Um, and now in England, it's uh, and Scotland and Ireland and all the rest. Um, it's it. There are festivals. There are cartoon bookshops. There are bande dessinée, kind of everywhere. So it's grown hugely. Last year at the festival, artist Riyad Satouf caused a bit of controversy by saying he'd boycott Angoulême because the jury hadn't put any female artists or writers on the long list for the main prize. Why do you think it remains quite a male-dominated industry? I've always worked for the press and, uh, of course, for the, in the British newspapers there aren't that many cartoonists or, or bande dessinée um, and most of them were done by men, but there were one or two done by women. I mean, it's always been male-dominated, probably like a, I mean, a lot of um, uh, professions it has been, but there are more and more women in it. One of your best love novels, Gemma Bovary, visits that old Franco-British love-hate relationship as a British couple sets up home among French neighbours. Where do you think this mutual fascination comes from between the two cultures? Well, I think it's probably historically. Um, we, there's sort of been love-hate, love, love hate, and also um, we owned quite a bit. I mean, in the Middle Ages, we owned quite a bit of France. And uh, uh, yes, so we fought each other a lot, but we seem to like each other for, for various reasons. If you ask English people uh, why they, they like France, there are so many reasons, they say. The food, the roads, the wine, the countryside, the... And I often ask French people what they liked about England, and often they say things like um, London taxis, um, Mmm, Scotch whisky. Not very many things. Used to be certainly not our food, but <laughs> I think our food's got better. Bonjour, Madame Bovary. Vous l'avez lu? Non. Hi, Gemma. May I introduce to our friend Patrick? This is Gemma. Hi, Patrick. Oh, you know each other? Parce que tout ce qui arrive à Madame Bovary, ça vous arrive. And do you think that suspicion, perhaps, between the French and the English has contributed to the recent Brexit vote? Oh, the recent... Bre how depressing. Um, I think the recent Brexit vote was to do with... Um, it was anti the government, really, and not so... I mean, it was about immigration. Um, but uh, so much... I mean, uh, you know, it was quite a narrow victory to leave. And so many uh, people in, in Britain just, just want to be part of Europe. Um, there are a lot who want to leave, but um, how we're we going to leave? I mean, it's a, it's a sort of nightmare. It's such, a, it's such a muddle. Nobody thought about what it meant. I'm very angry about it. Now, the title Gemma Bovary takes inspiration from another famous Bovary, Emma. Flaubert's novel of provincial ennui, perhaps, is a classic book here in France. What kind of impression did it leave upon you when you read it first? Um, I read it when I was about 15 um, in French, because we had to, um, with a big dictionary. And we were fascinated by it, because first there was adultery, um, quite, quite a lot of it, and then 
she was the first heroine that we'd really encountered who was um, really quite unpleasant and boring and rather a bad mother. So it was, we were fascinated by her. And of course, when she died, that made us cry because um, it was so, I mean, it's Flaubert's genius. So it made, it made a big impression on, on me when I, was, um, when I was young. And I suppose I've read it several, several times since. And when I decided to base um, Out of Steel, a bit of Flaubert's plot um, for my um, serial, um, I reread Madame Bovary again, and then I put it in a drawer and locked the drawer because I didn't want to be reminded of Flaubert's prose. Actress Gemma Arterton has played Gem Bovary on the big screen and also Tamara Drew, another of your novels. She told us that she really likes your characters because they're not necessarily likeable. Do you think that's a very British trait in terms of sense of humour, dark humour? Um, I think if you have, I mean, heroines are usually supposed to be all sweetness and light and, and, and um, get their man in the end. I quite like them to, well, to be human, to have their their faults, um, and also to be um, bound by some of the chains which different ones, say from Emma, Emma Bovary in Flaubert's novel, uh, who was a 19th century woman, but um, uh, now there are other things, but there's always the sort of tyranny of, of being a stereotype or uh, of beauty and thinness or whatever. Tamara Drew was a great success for British cinema, directed by Stephen Frears. How difficult was it to transpose your illustrations and text to film? And what were the things that were most surprising in this adaptation process? Well, I wasn't involved in the, really, in the, in the business of making the film, except that I was, I could be rung up by the Thanks writer, the scriptwriter, Moira Buffini, who would ring up and uh, sometimes say, what do writers do so. all day? Well, and I would say, it's also. not very cinematic. Sometimes we sort of go to the fridge and get some cheese. <laughs> and sometimes we sort of scratch our arse. And um, it's look, we look out of the window a lot, so it's not very filmic. <laughs> Even if I was the last man in the world, Tamara Drew wouldn't hurt me. When can we do this again? To the muse. However you find her. I didn't know they provided material too. Your series, Literary Life, was published as a comic strip in The Guardian newspaper. And in that, you poke fun at some of the publishing cliches, writer's block, procrastination, sycophantic agents. If you had to visit your literary creation, Dr Derek, who helps writers with their problems, what would your complaint be? Um, perhaps block. I'm blocked. And he would probably give me something to um, give me a good run for my money. <laughs> and I've got trouble with my punctuation. I've got trouble with my colon. Actually, not literally. My, <laughs> my semicolons. <laughs> my colons, my semicolons. Are you a disciplined writer? Not, not terribly. I draw first and then I, and then I write. So, um, but then the writing, I think, is the most difficult thing. So, I, yes, I do pay attention to it. Those sketches showcase your characteristic eye for detail, how people speak, their verbal tics, what they wear, where they shop. These are all very revealing details about British society, uh, politics and class. What do you think are the details that are so indicative about where people are in British society? Hmm. It's, it's often the way they speak, I'm afraid, which, you know, reveals all kinds of things. I mean, uh, the United Kingdom is still a very, you know, class, alas, is still, is still there. Goodness, um, I draw people in the street all the time or in the country all the time, and I'm always terribly interested in what they wear. Young people now, because of the various brands, they often look the same, and you, you, you can't act, you used to be able to tell but now you can't. And I look at their shoes and I think, oh God, they're Nike or... You can't really tell. 
I always notice that French women always have good handbags, whereas English women often have sort of thing like an old udder, sort of leather, leather udder, which is sort of full of crapola. You started providing drawings for the newspapers in the UK in the late 60s, and so you've witnessed a period of change and a certain amount of soul-searching in the press. What would you say are the major developments uh, in newspapers that have been consequential, and are they all as bad as my generation might think? Mm, I think things have changed such a lot. When I started, the, the newspapers in uh, Britain were kind of tribal. You knew who read them by what what they were. No, it's it's very different. Uh, partly because they cost so much um, over, you know, a huge amount. Um, it's it's changed, I mean, the new technology, of course, have changed things quite a lot and has made the newspapers and the press generally much more visual. Um, so there are many more photographs than there used to be. It's better printed. The, the um, Guardian, when I first started to uh, work on it, if you read it in bed, not only you would be covered in black, but the sheets, everything would be covered, were covered in black. Um, but it's, uh, I don't know any young person who actually buys a newspaper. Uh, they do it, they read it online. So whether that's the future of some of the newspapers that are, I don't know. I mean, it, it would be sad. Your sketches have been applauded for what's known as a kind of good-natured satire. But some people say that given the twists and turns politically in 2016, it's all beyond satire. What do you think? Yes, it is, completely. I mean, this time last year, to think that Trump would be about to be in the White House, to think that in, in Britain we would have were about to embark on Brexit, it, it's all... It's all very, um, very different. And you think, I think that something carnivorous has awoken. And, um, and perhaps, you know, we were all, uh, you know, that the herbiv the time of the herbivores may be over for, for, I hope not. I mean, the voice of the herbivores is very important. Will you be able to continue satirizing it? Oh, I hope so, yes, yes. Mm -hmm.